expect Hubel to be on scholarship? And is, is everybody on the roster in good standing heading into spring ball? Uh, uh, Hugel's on scholarship right now. We put several guys. One of the best changes that we've had, uh, we were able to put him on this spring. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to keep him on. But, uh, you know, that's always part of the, of the roster uh, as far as uh, roster management, as far as what happens this spring. I'm sure we'll have some guys that, that uh, uh, will go through the spring every year. We always have somebody that, that uh, you know, decides that uh, they may want to move on. Dane Rogers is a young man that, that came to see me, and he's decided that he wants to, you know, finish up here this spring and, and transfer uh, probably to a 1AA school. And uh, certainly have no problem with that. That's the decision that, that, that he's made and uh, uh, support him in that. And then, you know, like I said, we go through the off season, go through spring practice, and then we have all of our exit interviews from time to time. You may have somebody that, that uh, has a better opportunity, wants to go play more, whatever, and I uh, don't have any issues with that. And then from time to time, you have discipline issues. And certainly hope we don't have to deal with any of that. But, uh, you know, that's, that's just that's the way it goes. But, as far as our numbers, we're we're uh, we're right on our number. Uh, we're not over at all. Uh, we, you know, Cade right now is, is slated to be a gray shirt. Uh, but if something changes as far as the numbers, uh, he'll he'll be a guy that that uh, we would definitely want to bring in uh, with the rest of this class. Here's some things with Demond Hopper. Is he still with the team? Yeah. As far as I know, as uh, <laughs> far as I know, like I said, I've been I've been on the road. Last time I, I heard he was with the team, but we'll What's your see. Story from your visits this year, going down to visit kids and parents, and what'd you come away with as your favorite visitor or a little story you might come out of? Oh, I had lots. I mean, like I said, you'd have to give me a name and trigger it trigger something with me. I had lots of great stories. Uh, probably one of the coolest stories I said earlier today was going down to Trey Lamar's house. Uh, he had just moved into. A new home. They'd only been there like a couple of weeks in this neighborhood. They'd only moved down the road or whatever. And so we were going into the house or find, trying to find the house. And we, there's a house that had the Clemson flag hanging outside. I said, "Oh, this has got to be. This has got to be them right here." Uh, but it wasn't. He was the house next door. And I'm like, "Well, dang, he's got a neighbor with a Clemson flag. That's pretty good." And uh, so uh, we go in the house and we had a great visit and. And his, I was like, well, who are these people next door? And they're like, oh, gosh, they had met them already, and they're huge Clemson fans. And, and I was like, well, let's go over and knock on the door. And uh, so I don't know, it was 7, 30, 8 o'clock, whatever. So we go over and knock on the door. And they answer the door, and they're in, like, their pajamas. And, and uh, it was, it was a, a husband and wife and a little girl, and they were like, I'm like, what's happening? And uh, so I so said, you never know who's going to knock on your door. Uh, but I wanted to thank them for flying the Clemson flag. And so we went in the house, and proceeded to get a tour through the entire house and every Clemson artifact that was in the house and, and how it got there and uh, really had a great time meeting uh, some really nice folks, a couple of graduates from Clemson. Uh, so that, that was kind of neat, uh, spending time with them. Can you uh, just recount how the ski trip thing started and, and what's the, what was the genesis behind that? Uh, real simple. Um, there's a guy named Harry Frampton. Uh, who was a Clemson grad and one of our one of our uh, great supporters in this program and, and basically uh, Harry basically developed about half of Vail and Beaver Creek out there and uh, so uh, he'd always been trying to get us to come out and uh, so he uh, uh, I finally took him up on it and we went out and I said and he invited anybody on the staff that wanted to come and and they've just done a great job of kind of coordinating all the logistics and stuff. And so really all we got to do is just kind of get there. And, uh, uh, you know, he has us picked up. And so we've been doing that for, for, for a long time, ever since I've been the head coach. And, uh, you know, it's a fun time. And, and sometimes some people can go and some can't. you got kids and things like that. But all, all of the people who go each and every year and the kids that go, it's just a, it's a wonderful time. And uh, I, I've never, I'd never skied a day in my life. Uh, and so, you know, I've actually gotten to where I can get down the hill pretty good now. So it's a lot of fun. But, but we can thank Harry for that. You know, he was the one that just kind of kept inviting us out there. And, and um, we finally took him up on it. All of them. Uh, there's nobody I'm not looking forward to seeing play. Uh, you know, all these guys are, are uh, you know, guys that we recruited and they bring certain things to the table. Um, I think this spring, 
these seven mid-years, I'm anxious to see them because they're here right now. And uh, so I'm anxious to see, you know, where they fit in, how they compete. Uh, you know, you know you've got Ankrum and, and Pollard, you know, two offensive linemen going through the spring. And uh, we've got big Dexter and Samuel and, and uh, Pinckney uh, going through the spring. We've got, we got a couple of those linebackers in Trey and Shaq uh, here as well. So uh, that, though, I'm really looking forward to that. And then, you know, the rest of those guys, we'll see where they are uh, when they roll in here uh, late June. You know, some guys on your team become stars and well-known. How much have they played a role in helping get recruits here and, and the visits and hosting them, that kind of thing? Uh, I mean, the, again, your, your players are your greatest asset. I mean, it's just that simple. If, if, you're, if you're not doing a good job with your, your players, um, you're probably not going to do very well in recruiting. It's just that simple. Um, so, you know, I think that it plays a huge role. I don't think there's any question about it. You know, it plays an absolute huge role, uh, along with winning and just, you know, the production of your pro. We have a track record. We have a seven-year track record. And uh, when you can sit down and say, okay, we've had 135 seniors and 129 of them are graduates, 75% uh, of the guys who've left here and got a shot at the NFL made it, uh, you know, those are staggering numbers. Uh, so, you know, those are things that you can sell, uh, five, ten-plus win seasons, you know, 71 guys have gotten a shot at the NFL in the past seven years. Uh, I mean, th those are things that, that resonate because they're facts. And, uh, and then, you know, so you, you take your, your current players and, and uh, they are enjoying their college experience. Uh, they're getting their education. They know that there is structure and order and discipline in the program. Uh, there's consistency, uh, not perfection, but consistency. You know, that resonates. You know, our guys know we care about them. And, uh, you know, and every program has a few guys here and there that, that, you know, maybe aren't as happy as others, but at the end of the day, they all know we care about them. Can you touch on the three wide receivers and how different they are? What yeah. Well, I think that's important, uh, and we try to, you know, do, that, do a good job of that every year. I think Jeff does an excellent job of, of uh, making sure that we bring all the tools to, that we need to the offense because it's different. I mean, just like you can't go out and sign all centers and guards, you need tackles. You can't sign all D tackles, you need some ends. You can't sign all Mike backers, you need some outside guys. You know, you can't sign all corners. You know, it's, it's it, the different things. And so each year we try to do a good job of making sure we got the right mix. Uh, and, uh, and I think you'll see this in next year's class as well uh, as far as how we put this thing together. Uh, but uh, TJ is, is a, <laughs> a great prospect, uh, really smooth route runner, great ball skills, uh, a savvy, instinctive player, a guy that's played a lot of defense as well. And I think he brings a mentality that you love to have there. Um, Cornell Powell is freaky. You know, I mean, just physically. He is physically just a freaky guy. You know, I, I, he looks like Sterling Sharp. You know, when – like what Sterling Sharp looked like with the Packers. That's what he looks like. I mean, it's just unbelievable his, his physical development for a young guy. Uh, you know, really strong, fast, explosive. Uh, you know, and then, and then you throw in DeAndre Overton. Uh, he's, a, he's a cross between Mike Williams, Mark Davis Bryant, and Nuke Hopkins. I mean, he's a big-time basketball player like Mike and, and Nuke were. Uh, great ball skills, very raw unbelievably uh, gifted and, and, and just so much untapped potential. He's only played a couple years. I mean, this kid has a chance to be really, really special. He's already 200 pounds. Um, and as he transitions into playing football full time and he's in that weight room and, and just getting the, the day in and day out part of, of the position, he, 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 the sky's the limit for him. And so we, we, we've hit a home run with all three of those guys. They really were our top picks. Uh, we, we probably offered about eight guys, and those three guys were, you know, I mean, top, top of our board. And uh, it was done pretty early as well, you know, even though DeAndre didn't officially uh, commit until whatever, December or 1st of January, whatever it was, he, he, uh, we knew he was coming for quite a while.